How's it going, everybody? We're here in the studio with Jordan, our fourth podcast. And of course, we have Ariana Ortega. Hey, everybody, it's Ari. <laughs> and of course, I want to give the floor to Mr. Jordan. Hello, hello. Brief introduction, por favor. I'm Jordan, you know, one of the photographers in InView Media working on the videography and just one of the shooters in general. Um, luckily, I was able to be a part of this team and I'm almost a year in. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Yeah, good, good. Uh, as far as like your experience with Envy Media, I know we started you officially around almost in February or was it Feb of this year? Or I know it was after March. Officially? Yeah, yeah I officially. Think it was February. Officially. You yeah. and Israel started around yeah. February. Yeah. I know you came in around the ends of October Last year. or November. The ends of November. November. Ends yeah, of November, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you could give us a little bio as far as like how you came into the actual team. And then, of course, just a little bio as far as like what you've done in the past, because um, as far as like everyone in the team knows that you're not technically schooled in photography yeah. or videography. You kind of came in like literally from scratch. Yeah. And that's kind of a very interesting story because not a lot of people get that opportunity to come into this career path basically just like a clean slate. No. Here's my resume. No. I have no experience at all. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it's kind of just how I approach life, sadly, you know, like mix of rocky waters. But um, prior to everything, it was just dancing, right? So I was just a b-boy, had a scholarship. So I had to learn jazz, ballet, tap, contemporary, modern. It was a definitely a weird journey. I was not up for wearing tights. Thankfully, they let me wear basketball shorts. Mm. Um, but uh, just as I went on, it's just something more of the arts. The only time that I picked up uh, photography prior was to do my own photography mm. for dancing and stuff. But it was very minimal uh, experience. And how I actually got this job is like really, really strange. I went to do a security job and <laughs> went out to the middle of the Mojave. And um, my friend that was hooking me up with the job, he just left me there, you know, and I was out in Mojave. <laughs> <laughs> and it was terrible. And um, I actually went to complain um, to my mom, you know, because she knows the individual. And I said, this mother effer, you know, okay. <laughs> just like this guy I can't handle. And um, it, it kind of rang a bell in her head. And she was like, I just met this guy yesterday. And um, he does photography. Do you still do it? And I said, no, I don't have a camera, you know. And I was so angry. I said, don't even worry about it. I'll figure this out. And then it kind of like hit me and I was like, oh, you're being stubborn. Mm -hmm. Like, like you're just being prideful right now. Just fuck it. If, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And if mm -hmm. it does, it does, you know? Yeah. Um, so she hit him up and then we ended up getting in a meeting that day. And then, um, it was just like, Hey, let's try it out and see, see how you do. And, um, but you and Irvin met later that day. Yeah. That day, the guy later. was me. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I'm, I'm, so I'm the guy, the guy, I'm the guy, guy. <laughs> my mom met Irvin, you know? And, um, yeah, we got together. We got on a phone call, set up a meeting for mm -hmm. later that day. And then, um, yeah, I just started working as soon as I could, just yeah. learning the ropes. Um, yeah, I do remember that that day, like if it was yesterday, as far as like how it went down. Like I met your mom the day so before and uh, <laughs> she was going, she was, uh, I guess she was shadowing uh, Paula Stafford. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's kind of where I met your mom, where Paula was kind of like going through the process as far as like how to prep the house and then um what exactly i'm looking to get when it comes to like actually coming into the house and actually literally already having it prepped for me so i kind of got you i got to talk to your mom i'm going to say very very small brief like towards the end because we were talking about how i was having a hard time looking for employees and you know committed employees um and we're just talking about work standards and work efforts and basically just small talk towards the end and she didn't say nothing about you. She basically is like, oh, okay, cool. And then literally the next day I was out with uh, Israel, uh, other photographer, videographer. We were out in the valley or we're driving up to the valley and that's when your mom called me, but I didn't recognize the number. I didn't even recognize her, <laughs> nothing. Like her name did, didn't come to my to my mind at all. Yeah. And I, I think we got on a three-way call where you came into the call as well. And then I kind of started asking you questions. And I remember, on the drive when we hung up, I was telling Israel like, bro, that's not gonna work out. Like he's already telling me he doesn't know how to use a camera. <laughs> like how is this gonna yeah. how is this gonna work out? But at that at that time, uh, we had lost two photographers. So we're kind of building the team from scratch again. So it was almost like 
there's there's nothing that I'm gonna lose from actually just doing an interview. So let's just go for it. And yeah, we I came back from the valley, met you at a certain time in the evening time out here, and then we kind of were just chatting it up. I think we just hit it up off the conversations that we were having, and yeah. from there, like I I understood like where your head was at. And I guess it was more your conversation that resonated with me as far as like as a, as a person, not as a creator, because essentially you were not a photographer at all mm-hmm. or a videographer at all. So I'm like, you know what? If if he shows me the commitment throughout the process, then I'm more than willing to put the time into him to actually getting up and running so that he can make money officially as a photographer, a videographer. And you know, I took a chance, you know, and yeah. here we are. Hey, <laughs> here we it's, are. It's been the rest of here yeah. we are. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, it's almost a year. Almost a year. Yeah, almost a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's wild. Quick. Yeah, it's when you're busy. Yeah, you know, when yeah, you're busy. For real. When you're busy, it goes really fast. But yeah, every time that I, I think we had spoken about this too, like how it went so quick, and essentially how far you've come. From not knowing nothing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not knowing uh, nothing, like no knowledge, no yeah. experience. Yeah, I mean, my own experience is like prior. What I knew, what the I knew that I knew ISO shutter speed. Like. <laughs> yeah, and like the very bare bone basics. But if you were to ask me, you know, what does ISO mean? Mm-hmm. You know, I would just draw a blank. <laughs> yeah. Everything was like, like really tough to learn. But um, as it goes, as far as photography this line of work, it it is very routine. So Mm -hmm. to learn this style of photography, if you are not a creative, would be perfect to get your foot in the door Mm -hmm. because it is like set up the shot, this is the shot. And if you need to be more creative to show off certain aspects of the room, you can, but the borders are are very thick Mm. in in your means of creativity. So it's very good for rather rinse repeat. You know? It's really structured. Like there's a lot of yeah, like you're saying the routine. Yes, is routine. There. Yeah, it's like one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, next shot. <laughs> Boom. One, two, one, three. two, three. And it's uh, it becomes habit really quick. And then you just start building the habit of using your camera. Mm-hmm. And little by little, as long as you keep entertaining that habit outside of work, mm-hmm. um, then you just grow an attachment. And then it's like, oh shit, you know, <laughs> look at that. I'm getting good. <laughs> So how long was the training process for you? Like going from knowing nothing to actually like getting it's out a feeling there comfortable. On your own. Yeah. On my own. And what was the process as far as like in your head to actually even navigate the thought process like, all right, I'm gonna be a photographer. Cause you weren't coming in that I'm gonna say the the day before, <laughs> like, oh, I'm gonna become a photographer. It was like literally out of nowhere for both of us too. See, all right, and then here's this weird thing about life, right? Because I strongly believe in manifesting. And at the time, um, I was dating this girl, and I remember I was telling her, I I want to get into a creative field. And I was entertaining the ideas of what could I? Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, you know, photography would be dope again, Mm -hmm. you know? And that would be really cool to actually dive into it. But the issue was like, how the fuck am I going to find work? Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be very hard because that was the issue prior. You know, it was, I don't want to spend money on people doing photos for me dancing. So I'll do the photos myself. But now that I have this camera, how can I make money off of it? You know, and it was like, I I don't really know how. Mm -hmm. So that's what stopped that journey and um, stopped it rather early. So this coming in, it was weird because even the girl was like, how do you do it? And I was like, what do you mean? She was like, you, what you want, it comes into your life. And I was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't. And she was like, she's like, we talked about this. You said that you were going to do photography. And I was like, oh shit, I did, huh? I was like, <laughs> I forgot, you know? And, uh, and I think that's, that's what it is. Like if you ever get into manifesting, um, it's always about like having an intent, understanding that intent, being very detailed about it and then letting it go. Mm-hmm. So by letting it go, I did forget about it. Mm-hmm. And when it popped up in my life, I wasn't like, yes, I manifested this. Let's go. It was that someone reminded me, yo, you brought this into your life. Mm-hmm. And um, so it was a means of me even coming back to the Antelope Valley, you know, because I was in Winnetka prior. And um, that is a whole story in itself. But when I came over here, I didn't come over here because I was like, oh, like, let me go back to the Antelope Valley. Everybody <laughs> wants think to be here. You know? <laughs> I don't think anyone was like, yes. I, I do. Every time I come back from the valley, <laughs> I'm like, screw traffic. <laughs> okay, I mean, in that regard, that's fair. But uh, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I just have this, like, where you just look out into the desert, you know, 
and you just see the desert. For me, it has never been something where I say, wow, look at what you can build on this empty land. Mm -hmm. You know, it has always been a deserted feeling that mm -hmm. it gave me. So a means of coming back to the Andalus Valley was never a strong drive. So whatever brought me out here was a spiritual walk that I was going on that eventually led to this. Now, um, as far as building into the mentality of becoming a photographer, it's just like any attachment, you know? If you only allow yourself to indulge in it when you are working, that's as far as you're gonna get, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? You need to find photographers that you like, you need to find the history of it, things that allow you to create an attachment to it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then we have television, movies, everything, like that is all captured with a camera. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy to indulge in this craft, you know? Mm -hmm. All I have to do is watch a movie and say, okay, look, they switched the camera angle there, they look at that, those lines are off, that would be better if this shot was like this, or mm -hmm. oh, I like what they did there, and it's opening up the mind because you're perceiving it in a different sense. Yeah. So wanting to become a photographer and indulging in it, it that that is always the easy part for me you know i think the the harder part would be find a a community that i resonate with and um that but as well as like you know i just have to get out of my comfort zone and do it you know but uh i also don't creatives are their own humans as mm -hmm. well um so it's it's strange but i think the becoming a photographer from my own perspective was like the easier part it was harder learning mm. like the actual <laughs> routine of the houses yeah yeah, yeah. It, it does get a little bit well once you get it it is very repetitive but once you're when you're like coming from nothing at all like like you said you didn't know what iso meant so you're kind of going off of not how to navigate the house is like how to navigate my camera settings first and then make sure that i get those camera settings every time and understand those camera settings, not only on the camera, comfortable with the camera, the speed light, yeah. because a lot of photographers don't even know how to use a speed light. So you're coming in like with everything, like, oh, now you have to learn how to view the drone. I'm like, okay, now you have yeah. to learn how to use a gimbal. And you're like, what is a gimbal? Yeah. <laughs> so and you're gimbal. coming from nothing, like scratch, scratch. So yeah. <clears throat> going back to that um, same question, what would you actually say that you would do differently as far as like, if you could go back in time and say, Maybe I could have done this differently so that I could have made it easier for the, as far as like for me, like my mindset of thinking to actually process this quicker. Mm. I don't, I don't know if I, there'd be anything that I would say to process it quicker other than maybe going more. The but you were like with me like every that's day. That's what I mean though. Yeah, I you were with me every day. The only issue that arised in my journey were health issues and car issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then I had jury duty too. <laughs> so this past year, there was just a bunch of BS that kept <laughs> flinging at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was just, uh, it was a lot. And um, so, I mean, maybe nothing that I could do myself. Maybe I would have invested in a better car hmm. earlier on if I knew that this is the path that I was going to be taking, <laughs> you know, so then a little more reliable. Um, but other than that, I don't know. I feel like maybe play with the gimbal more. I, uh. I think the only issue that I'm really having right now is the, the comfortability of the gimbal, uh. but that just comes with practice. Yeah. Um, other than that, I feel like the understanding came really quickly. Um, Photoshop for the necessity that we need it. it. That's already habit. Lightroom, same thing. Just repetition, man. Yeah. And I, I think people neglect that. Mm -hmm. a, 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 if you just repeat something, uh, consistently. Like, consistently, man. Yeah. Like it'll be good. Even like thought process, people don't realize that. Um, like thought dictates direction. Mm -hmm. So if you are not um, the sole influencer of your thought process, that means something else is. So the way that you, the direction of your life is either in your control or it's in the influencer's control. Mm -hmm. So if you allow your thoughts to kind of just wander off into X, Y, and Z, then you're just gonna take longer learning anything. But if your thought process is in your habit in the direction that you want it to go in, then anything that you'll learn will be quicker. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so, other, so for that, I, I feel like I was fairly focused. Um, and maybe the drone, you know what? Playing with the drone, that drone the is drone. annoying. You know, for those Especially who don't know. Especially how windy it is out here. It's like, that's It's actually challenge. not been that as windy as it's been before, so. <laughs> See, and then also technically not as hot, right? Mm -hmm. You're saying? So not as hot, not as cold. Not as hot, not as cold, and not as windy. I came yeah. at the perfect time. Yeah, you <laughs> did, you definitely did. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> 
but uh but i did i did crash a drone sadly um <laughs> how did you crash it like what did you crash it into a branch <laughs> and and it like swallowed the drone like i heard like like and then i looked and it wasn't even in the tree but it it smacked into it and it like rotated into the tree because one of the blades got stuck in it mm. and then it was just going oh, and I was like, oh no and i was running at it and it <laughs> fell out the sky and it started slowing down and then it started speeding up really quickly and it was like Whoa! <laughs> I was holding it and I was like, holy cow. And I was like trying to inch the battery out and <laughs> finally came out. And I was like, no. Oh it was one of the nice ones too, sadly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah and I was, uh, it was definitely a heartbreaking moment, but it, it goes into um, show just how it, it is like a toy. Mm -hmm. Is that but, the only time you've crashed the drone? Or have you like. Um, it's the only time that I've broken the drone. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember you did crush it one more time. Yeah, I, I hit a branch before, and you know, Irvin was walking out the house when it happened. You know, and I'm perfect time. I didn't see it. You oh, know, I was, oh. I, was, I, was, I, I was distracted at him coming out the house. So technically, it's his fault. Oh you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but that that one, it, it was fine. It just kind of smacked the brush and fell into the grass. Mm -hmm. But the other one literally got stuck in the branch. Yeah, like and, tangled. Uh, yeah, and like the whole propeller like came out the socket and everything, and. uh Ooh. Yeah, it's one of those uh, things that a lot of people don't understand how easily it is to like crash into something because it's so easy to fly, you know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then of course we have sensors on that drone, but a branch, you know, it's like a hair to the drone. It, the sensor doesn't catch it sometimes. That it could just, like you said, it catches on to the propeller and that's it. It didn't touch the actual drone. It just touched the propeller. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So that's that's one of those things that I always told everybody in the team, like just keep an eye out, like line of sight at all times. It's very important. Yeah. And now that you actually experienced that angst as far as like crashing the drone, I'm pretty sure you view it differently as far as like when you're flying the drone. Oh yeah. Now like I won't get anywhere close to a tree. You know, power lines. Wind, power lines. Power lines. Yeah. yeah. If I gotta be extra high, that's okay. Yeah, we yeah. can crop it. Yeah. You know? Ain't no big deal. <laughs> Um, because I've, I've even seen like the drone be in one spot and because of the wind drift a, a considerable amount and um, that is yeah no it's scary now anytime that I fly the drone I am nervous like yeah. I'm, I'm like quick check in back and forth yeah. also too there could be at times a lag um, for when you move it and the drone is moving but on the the screen nothing's moving mm. Um, so you, you have to watch out for little things like that mm. because Jeez. you might be moving and thinking, why isn't it moving? And you press harder and you don't realize that the drone is now going like full speed to the left. And, uh, so it was just understanding like what, what you have. And again, repetition. You know, yeah. The more you use it, the more you'll understand, oh, okay, it's pretty hot outside. So it might lag, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> there might be some latency. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's but, true. Uh, does it, does it overheat easily the drone? Um, I'm using the, uh, a little like mini right now. So you mm -hmm. connect a phone to it and it's mm -hmm. the phone that overheats oh, and it's because okay. of how hot it is outside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, that's generally the issue, but I know he, he had got a newer one where it has like an actual remote, like mm -hmm. solely for oh, the Oh, you've seen it. The Fairfax, when we went to fly the Fairfax, the controller had the screen on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that so looks that pretty one, cool. That looks. Does that overheat too? Or no, that's the phone. That's the phone. Yeah. yeah. So okay. once the phone overheats, the it dims as far as like the actual screen. Yeah. So it's harder to see, and then of course that's where the lag. And your phone is pretty old, so I've never had a la lagging issue. Uh, more of the the dimming of the like the actual screen because it gets hot, oh, so it's, it's trying to cool hot. it. Um, but with the, the the one that I just bought, it comes with the screen, the controller, and has like yeah. a little fan inside. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's their biggest reason. I, I was like, I don't care. I'm, I need it because yeah. I, I hate when I can't look at my phone. There's no shade anywhere, especially out here in the AV. Good luck finding a tree. You know, yeah. like good luck finding a tree. You have to be either be inside your car, which is not good because you're not seeing the drone anymore, or you're like, like I don't know, trying to figure out how to make your body into shading so you can actually see your screen correctly. Yeah, I'll, I'll be yeah. like <clears throat> shoving myself in my trunk, trying mm -hmm. to get the only corner in there that has some shade. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then same thing, the, the screen will dim. So even if it's in the shade, it's hard to see. But 
But yeah, sometimes like if it gets too hot where the phone itself is like really hot, um, the screen will just freeze. <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking at the drone and I'm like, okay, I think this is right. Let me wait for the screen to catch up. And if it is, I'll snag the photo. Yeah. But, um, Why aren't you using my phone? The old one. I am. Oh, you are? That's the one. Oh, that flags, yeah. oh that's an old ass phone then. That's yeah. The one that's that's, that's an old ass phone. Yeah. It's like my iPhone 6, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, I mean, reasonable that it lags. Yeah. But, um, but <laughs> it's like yeah. my laptop. <laughs> right. And then I think the only other, an, an issue that I, I've found myself is just people staring. You know? Yeah, and like oh, they're the concerned, or just in general. Just in general. No, no we got yelled at yesterday. Like, oh, uh, you got yelled at yesterday. No, Israel. It was it was me, Israel, and Aaron. Aaron was in the backyard. Okay. And then um, I told Israel, like, because when you're hovering over people's houses, you have to do it quickly. Okay. Um, and of course, he was just, you know, measuring where he was gonna be at, and then you know that kind of stuff. And he was. <laughs> He was doing the photo and then he was going to do the video. So he was going to going back and forth. And it wasn't like we were on top of the guy's house or anything. It was literally the next door neighbor. And he just came out. Luckily, the neighbor next door to him was our, they were, he was already talking to us. And um, he had just recently sold his house. So he already experienced the whole process. And he was just like, man, it's so cool that you guys do this. So he was praising yeah. us okay. while the guy was coming out. I was like, why are you flying over my house? And <laughs> And literally, I just pointed to his neighbor and, you know, like from there, I'm like, I just told like, oh, we're just doing our job. And yeah. he's like, but why are you flying over? And like, all right, talk to your neighbor. You know, like that's it's just people that just yeah. they want to cause certain um, either drama or their life or, or just like just boredom. You know, just want to have something to do that they day. Just, they feel I feel like some, you know, they feel like their privacy is being invaded. Uh, I, I get that. But once you're when you're actually explaining what you're doing to whoever it is that you're is uncomfortable, you know, like, and you're doing it in a like polite way. And I wasn't flying, it was Israel. So I was the one talking while Israel was still flying. And I'm like, oh, sorry, we're not trying to invade your privacy. We're just doing real estate photography while I was talking to his neighbor at the same time. Luckily, like I said, his neighbor was in a good mood and act like he was praising us as far as like what we were doing. So he kind of just let it go. But I could tell if his neighbor wasn't there, he would have just kept going. Cause I've had so many issues with people that just literally cannot, I don't know what it is. They just don't listen. I'm like, just doing my job. If you have an issue, please talk to your neighbor. She'll let you know what I'm doing or if not talk to the realtor, but still like they just keep going and going like, well, I don't like this. And I'm like, well, it's not what you like. You know, it's what it's just, you know, you don't own airspace, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, but it, it is what it is. And it's one of those things that I kind of like, get you guys into the mind mindset too, like how to na actually navigate certain people. Cause there are people that are a little bit more, they're not there, they're not there in their heads. And like, I think me, you and Israel have experienced it. And luckily I was there where I had told you, take out your phone. I, I, um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That so, one was, that yeah, was crazy. Yeah. So that's kind of where, um, a lot of people do, do calm down because they feel like if you do post them online, they get scared. Um, as far as like what they're gonna actually be viewed at, yeah, oh, exactly. No. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I don't know if you remember that story. If you do, uh, you're yeah, more than yeah, welcome yeah. to actually go through that story. Yeah, we were, were just uh, getting the drone up in the sky, and then some dude pulls up in his truck. He's just sitting there waiting, looking at us. And then Israel goes up to the car, and you know, just tells him. Is this him, in like a regular Hortil. neighborhood? We're in no, this is a nice neighborhood. Like, where it, the houses are like super spread out. Uh, they're spread out because it was a. It was in Quartz Hill, and you know, like those when it's like uh, on a main street. Okay, yeah. And yeah, so it's gotcha. like yeah, they're they're kind of spread out. But this guy pulls in a little white truck, like pickup truck. He's just sitting there staring at us, and Israel goes up to him, "Hey, you know, we're just doing some real estate photography." And then the guy's mm -hmm. like, oh, "Okay, I'm here under an investigation." <laughs> <laughs> for for what you know? And then the guy's just like, for an like investigation. Neighbor, neighborhood you know? watch, I guess. Man, I don't know. This yeah. guy in his head, you know? Yeah. But uh, he, then um, he ends up driving off, but then saying, I'm going to shoot that shit down or something uh, along those lines. And then he came back with like a black pullover mask on. Yeah. <laughs> and then when he came back again, that's when, you know, he, uh, Irvin had brought it up you know, like pull out your phone and stuff. And I whipped it out and I like, I wasn't even recording or anything. I just <laughs> had it out like, yeah, I'm getting you. Yeah. And yeah, he just zoomed off and that was it, you know, but yeah. it, it, in that sense of where like, yeah, if I got your plates or something, you're going to be scared because now you're going to be accountable of being 
just like a douche for no mm-hmm. reason. And it's like, what do you, what do you even do? And you're trying to shoot. Paris. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, people no, are that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Is that like the kind of worst situation you've been in? When no, the drone? no, I've been in way worse. Like where people get in like literally up to my Anyways. nose. Yeah. They get up uh-huh. to my nose. Like, and I'm having the controller is still in my hands and I'm like, what's your, the, the issue is that you think it's, I'm putting you in danger, but you're putting yourself in a position where now I'm putting my I, the items around me in danger because now I can't see what I'm doing. Like now I have to confront you on the 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 whatever it is that the action in your head that you're thinking that I might crash the drone in your house or I'm invading your privacy. Now it's now floating by itself while you're arguing with me while I'm trying to explain to you what I'm doing, um, but. So many people are just like, I don't know, they're too far, like, where they're just lost, you know, like, yeah. it's more of like, I mean, I, they could have a body in their backyard. Yeah, you know, exactly. We don't, know. We, oh don't, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Like, I was just thinking like, oh, they just want their privacy. Respect. No. 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 Yeah. No, I've had, uh, we're around the <laughs> Lancaster Boulevard. Those houses are older houses. Yeah. Um, around there, I had to like, to Two individuals, I'm not gonna say they're like the most uh, high end s- up in the society spectrum, you know? You know, like they were like within the, I could tell that they were in doing something, you know? And of course I was flying the drone, getting the shot for the house. And I think I was getting the neighborhood uh, view. And I think that's when they saw it. And then I was still flying and it was two of them. They were big guys too. And you could tell they were on something. Uh-oh. And that's where they were, they were just like, going off they're like did you see us and did you see us and i could tell they're they must have been doing something oh my gosh. um so that's where like i'm <laughs> like tweaking. yeah right <laughs> so I, I did tell them like look i'm just doing my job here's my business cards you're more than welcome to research what i'm doing um luckily one of them was somewhat sound in their head so they kind of just left it alone and then at the time we had another photographer that he was inside of the house and he came out i told him the story he, we were changing lenses or we're changing something and uh, he had his equipment out and luckily he was facing me and I was facing the opposite direction and I saw the individuals come to us with, with another person, so now three individuals. And right away I told him, I opened my trunk and I'm like, bro, put your stuff in my car right now. Just like put your, like, he's like, why? He's like, just put it in. He threw it in. Um, the, the guy that came with them, he was a bigger guy too. But like I said, we got lucky, we got lucky so that, big guys came out with right? With guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so luckily the other guy was actually m- more sound in the head and okay. he kind of like understood what we were doing and out of respect, I'm like, yeah, bro, like I'm not, there's nothing that I could tell you that I'm doing anything wrong. Like I'm just doing my job. He's like, all right, man, it's just, this guy's a little paranoid. I'm like, ah, oh, no worries, man. It happens. And he was asking, could we see what you guys are doing inside? I'm like, nah, it's policy. It's, you know, it's not my house. (laughs) And then they left and sure enough, they came back again when we were inside and they were going like, like, uh, they're trying to look inside through the windows and I was calling the realtor. Realtor wasn't answering. So people get a little crazy. So yeah, yeah, that's a little weird. Yeah. People get a little crazy. Especially if you're by yourself. Yeah. Especially by yourself. Yeah. In that situation, could I just leave? Yeah, yeah, yeah for okay. sure. Anytime that you guys feel like you guys are at knees or not in the best situation where the neighborhood doesn't look safe, I... Now, I'll, if there's I'll. a squatter, can I leave? Oh, I'm yeah. not going to ask you to okay. stay there. Okay. Right. I'm not going to ask you to <laughs> become so friends. Can you move to this room while I <laughs> Just go in the closet and we get these shots real quick. Right? <laughs> Do you mind leaving for an hour? Coming back later. Uh, <laughs> Has that ever happened? Have well, you guys we ever had squatters? experienced a squatter? Not yet. Hopefully not I think any most houses. Yeah, we always not. Yeah. Really like I've had a situation where I was at a house and the house next door was going to go on sale. And while I was doing the outside, the realtor came and started talking to me. He's like, oh, you do photography for real estate. And I thought he was just going to ask for a business card. He's like, oh, I just opened the door. There's a squatter in my house. I'm like, dang, that sucks. So luckily, wow. I didn't. I didn't get that house. You know, like, I didn't get that house. <laughs> what do you expect me to do? Like? So he called the cops, and the cops came. There was a lady, and luckily they got her out because yeah. squatters they have squatters a lot have of, a rights lot of rights in California. So you cannot take them out. But I don't know what they, the cops said to her. She was literally outside by the sidewalk. Like, Please, ma'am, can you? Yeah, leave? with okay. her bag of clothes and kind of just wow. left her there. I'm like, wow. 
Yeah, yeah. But so a squatter can know their rights, and they could be a pain in the ass. Oh yeah, yeah. They could stay there for months, wow. almost a year. Really? Yeah. For a long time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So if they see if they have items there, like furniture already set up, like if kitchenware, if they're cooking, a cop is already going to uh, assume that they've been there more than a month. So from there, they it's almost like by law, you have no rights to kick them out anymore. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. California is weird. Yeah. California is really weird. Well, time to go look for my new house. <laughs> yeah, right. Jeez, you could make a little short. She brings it into my that. house. I was, like, oh, I was no. like, what the heck is going on over here? She's cooking. She's all posted no. in the garage. She's, She's, like, She's got four days. She has a calendar. <laughs> she has a calendar already, or like a Photoshop. Like, oh, this is like last year. It's proof that I've been here for a year already. The cops came on this day. So I have these many more months. Man, yeah, wow. California is it's interesting. It's a very interesting state to kind of like do anything when it comes to rentals, um, when deal with squatters, tenants. Have tenants. A lot of rights. Yeah, tenants, tenants have a lot of rights too. So, or renters, I guess. yeah, the pandemic kind of just messed it up for the a lot pandemic, of people too. Yeah, screwed a lot of people. Yeah, because because of the laws in California, but yeah. it is what it is. You it know? Also helped a lot of people in not the best way, but you know, it uh, two sides to every coin. <laughs> I don't know about that one. I mean, it's not a good thing that those people, you know, got put in better situations. Shit. Using my tax money, bro. Yeah, using yeah, my you know, tax money, living everywhere. for free. Like, no way. <laughs> uh, I mean, I wasn't a part of that. But I mean, I'm sure there's somebody that really needed that that opportunity. You know. I don't think everybody took advantage of it where I, I feel like the majority did, but you know. Yeah, it is what it is. You know, people yeah. take advantage, comfort, you know, it is what it is. People are always seeking the easiest way out um, to live or just to navigate their lives. So they get into those situations. Do I feel bad? Yeah. Circumstances do, do happen in people's lives where it's understood. Like, you know, life happens, you know, you're going through a rough time or whatever, but for most regards, a lot of people just, they're lazy. Yeah. I'm like, I, I can't relate to those people. So, you know, I'll hear them out. I'll see where, where they're coming from. But if it comes from like, oh, it's just, I didn't feel like it or whatever. I'm like, bro, you know, yeah, how old are you? Doing, <laughs> how old yeah. are you? That's fair. <laughs> how old are you? But yeah, as far as like now that you're in the team, what are your thoughts? Tell us I, how I you gotta really go to bed feel. Yeah, tell, tell, you, tell us how <laughs> you feel. I gotta go to bed early. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I dread. So what's early for you? What's go to bed early. Well, okay. So like I'm 10. If I go to bed at 11, I'm like, holy oh, shit. The next day? That's early good. or that's late? Late. That's oh, late okay. for me, like yeah. 11. Um, it, now it's come to the point where if I wake up at like 6.30, <laughs> I feel like I, I woke up late. Mm -hmm. you know? um, I'm up around. This morning I woke up at 3.30. Wow. And yeah, like I was like, all right, let me try to go back to sleep. Yeah, and I couldn't go back to sleep, and I was like, ah, oh, damn it, my mind's already racing. Yeah, you know? you're excited. Gotta go pee. Like, all right, whatever. <laughs> Let's go. What's up, day? Um, That's true. I think you're usually the first person that texts me in the morning. That and I wait to text ready. you. I try to I try to give you time because I don't want to text you too early. I'm and like, then, oh, there's Jordan. It's like six six a.m. Mm -hmm. See, <laughs> see, even then, that's a little too early. <laughs> I'm already up but, by then too. Yeah. So. Okay. We wake up early. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So if I wake up at like six thirty, that means I had a long night that night prior. Mm -hmm. um, that's what it has become. Um, but I mean, before that, before this job, literally before this job, I had worked uh, at Big Shots. It's a it's a bar, mm -hmm. and I worked the night shift. So it literally went from me going to bed at seven in the morning to me waking up at like three or four mm -hmm. in the morning. You know. Um, Mind you, I'm That's so happy crazy. I'm not doing that job anymore. <laughs> I will never work in a restaurant again. That wasn't a restaurant. <laughs> it was like a, a bar. bar. It's close enough, man. They got they food, food there. Yeah, yeah they have yeah. food, but it's they, not a restaurant. They had a chef there. I they wanted me to be a chef, and I told them, look, dude, I'm going to be there for three days, and I'm going to walk out. Yeah. <laughs> so they, I've, I'll try a different position, and I might stay longer, but I guarantee you, if you put me in that small-ass kitchen, mm -hmm. I'm going to be out of here. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean the the restaurant, bar life, any anything like that. It's just not really my thing anymore. I did I spent enough years in that environment. Um, so even prior to to all this, my first like actual job that wasn't dancing, <laughs> I was a tempanyaki chef. 
So that's pretty bad. I cook in front of you, do my little tricks, mm-hmm. throw my dancing in there, you know. So do the splits. it's a lot of fun. Do the Definitely. <laughs> I'm doing the splits on the hot <laughs> grill, you know, for all doing the Doing a backflip? <laughs> <laughs> what was your big trick as, like, the doing that? Did you have, like, a big... Yeah, 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 yeah. So we were able to drink with our customers. So I would fill up a cup and chug it, a whole beer in one go, and that was my wow. big trick. Yeah, people loved it. Wow, did you do that alcoholic. the near the end? <laughs> I did it whenever they bought me the beer. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. No, um, the, the, I guess... Me dancing was the selling point to so many people. Uh, when I would get drunk, I'd start doing the robot and I'd be flipping people with shrimp and I'd start like doing little isolations. Were you, you doing the noises oh, too? Oh, the, maybe if I was <laughs> drunk enough, you know, like um, they were so lenient there at uh, the, the restaurant that I worked at where, man, I could be like eight beers deep and someone buys me a, a Long Island iced tea and the owners will be like, yeah, yeah. Drink it, drink it, go, go, go. Long they're, they're, Island, they're spending tea. money on you. Go drink it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And I'll be like shit faced, you know, mm. and playing with fire and they're okay with it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, look at this. Oh wow. <laughs> People are like, yeah, throw a flaming shrimp in my mouth. Like, oh my goodness. Ah, you too. You know, and it's like, they, they loved it though. You You're know? more accurate. <laughs> no, for somehow I'd be doing my tricks and I wouldn't even be looking and I'd be throwing them, catching them. Wah, all Using fast. the force. I mean, man, I'd be throwing <laughs> knives and people are like, oh, oh it's crazy. You're not afraid. <laughs> I'm too drunk That's to be terrible. afraid. I was like, man. <laughs> I said, I wish I was afraid right now. I'd be a lot safer. <laughs> yeah, so then this is like a huge shift from that. Like, you're on your own now, pretty much yeah. in the houses. Like, you don't have, you know, big crowd of people you're entertaining. Yeah, because I mean, How's even... that adjustment? Like, do you prefer kind of just being on your own? Um, You know, I, I do like the... Uh, the personal conversations um, that I had. Performing and entertaining has always been a good point because mm-hmm. of dancing and everything. But in the dancing community, I'd always love to meet my idols and then pick their brain mm. as to what is this dance to you? You know, What inspired you? What is the thing that keeps you going? What does your eye see when you're watching others? And um, the perspective of many has always been a, a strong point in my life. So being able to do this job it, it almost seems like it would be a lot of time on my own, but I'm meeting families damn near every house. Mm-hmm. And then if they're willing to have a conversation, then I would love to pick their brain. Yeah. And, and not only that, but then we also get realtors. So I'm learning about the the um, idea of the stereotypical realtor and who mm-hmm. that is. And then you get to see the actual ones that care and they're very passionate mm-hmm. about their job or even just making money, you know? Mm. So it's still, I'm learning about these people. I'm seeing their perspectives and... Um, you know, we, we have the ability to learn from other people's mistakes. So if I meet somebody random and they have a story to share with me that can save me a mistake, mm-hmm. like, oh, a hundred percent will listen to that story, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? And, uh, yeah. So that, that's how I see it. The, the transition of, of that and say, if I'm at a house alone, it's vacant or something, man, I'm singing and, you know, I'm dancing around the house. <laughs> He's so, doing the robot. <laughs> yeah, like there's an echo. I'm the noises. the falsettos, you know, I'm going all out, you know. So if there is a squatter there, I don't know, man, I guarantee they're enjoying it. They're, they're, they're crazy the ass. Yeah, they're like, you know, see them dancing in the room. It's like, man, this guy getting it? And then, no, but it's uh, it's a lot of fun, you know. Um, it's, it's different. Um, and I think my excitement for what is – to come from this. Cause Mm -hmm. like I said, routine, the real estate thing is routine. And Mm -hmm. uh, most creatives I think will get bored with Mm -hmm. this job. Um, But I just view it as in, this is the most, most practice I've ever had doing photography. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've done more photography than some of my friends that try to pursue it in their life, you know, and it's crazy. So sure it's routine, but at the end of the day, I'm getting the practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we've spoken about this in the past and like, Every time we go to a house together where we have to go to the valley, we're always talking about basically this type of topic as far as like how far you've come from photography, from not actually knowing how to do it to actually knowing the process of actually doing a specific type of photography. Um, And then also being a photographer or creative that's actually getting paid. You know, a lot of creatives out there, they still, they've done it for so many years and they still haven't gotten paid yet. You yeah, know? they still got their day job and they're still <coughs> waiting for that big break. Yeah, exactly. You know? um, so that's kind of one of those things like I, I I see the the potential as far as like for people that actually come into the team to actually get a routine going where they're like just 
navigating their their camera where they're not even thinking about what they need to do they just know how to do it because it's so consistent so if situations come along where you're now learning how to do uh, documentary photography if you're like at a wedding or an event um, candid photography is very fast paced it's a little bit different but at least you're not thinking about your camera settings as much because it's so routine in your hands so it becomes more of like okay it's a different situation different scenarios uh, different environment but I'm, I'm at least I could transition easier because I've had so much practice on a daily. Oh yeah, man. Even when it comes to like just really, really understanding the function of my aperture. And then it's like now knowing that, oh, I can adjust these settings without really thinking about it and get the picture that I want mm -hmm. as opposed to it's like, yo, they're really close to you. You know, we don't want to see the background. And then it's like, okay, so what do I do? you know, all nervous and stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, like, I know what to do here. You know, <laughs> I, the, the means of compensation as well, like in, in shifting certain settings, that has become like a lot more normal as well. Um, so it, it, it is just a means of continuously practicing and then challenging yourself. Like I noticed that a big issue that I have when talking to people, just about anything, is I'm asking them more questions than they have asked themselves. Mm. And that right there is like, you, you need to ask yourself questions. Mm -hmm. Those who don't know, like the only way to work out your subconscious mm -hmm. is to ask questions. Like the subconscious is an answering machine, mm -hmm. you know, and the more information you give it for whatever question, the more elaborate the answer will be. Yeah. You know, and that, that is our subconscious. And so many people, I find irritation coming um, from them towards me because I'm asking questions and then I'm making their brain work, you know? Mm. And if, if you just like even use a muscle, right? And mm -hmm. you overwork that muscle, you're gonna be like, ah, bro, I'm tired of this. You know, you're gonna be sore the next day. Mm -hmm. So it's in the same respect, but I've built a habit of asking myself so many questions that it's like, I don't, I don't have that, that little pain, you know? So it's I, overwhelming for people when it comes to like certain types of questions. Mm -hmm. So if you're asking like, deeper questions that's where it comes overwhelming because a lot of people Very don't personal. even navigate that side of themselves or don't to, like to think about it yeah self-analyze yeah. themselves and you know like to progress themselves to actually say hey why am i not where i want to be you know those are the things that they would rather just let go and just like oh it's i'm living in the moment that kind of stuff so if you're asking easy questions i think we've spoken about this too fast food you know, a lot of people are used to just fast food when it comes to conversation, which is very intermediate conversation. And there's nothing that will allow themselves to grow nice from the conversation, level. you know, mm -hmm. um, and it also depends on the people you surround yourself with. So if you've surrounded yourself with with simple minded people and then you meet a person like yourself that is actually asking certain questions that they've never been asked before, it's just it's too much for them not because they didn't analyze themselves, it's just they've never met or have been around a person or even attempted to be around a person like yourself to actually say, oh, okay, maybe I should think about this as well. But at first it, it could be definitely like either self-conscious, you know, as far as like the question that you're asking them because it's too deep or it's just too much to, for them to process at the moment so they get really quiet. Or in some cases, people just get uh, resentful for whatever reason, you know, like they, they're already mad at themselves because you already know the answer, but they're not willing to actually put what they need to do to actually make themselves better. Yeah. And I feel like a big part of that is like the thing that, that I've heard the most is people respond like, don't talk to me like I'm a child. And then that's <laughs> what it hits me. Oh, people have said that to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then I don't even realize it because I'm just asking <laughs> questions, you know, and <laughs> and then it, it makes me think like then, OK, what is like the average parent doing? Why are you doing this? Mm. Yeah, yeah, you know, did you put that there? You know, and the, it, it's a very like means of when you're asking somebody a question, a lot of the times as the receiver, people take it in a way that isn't good because parents are generally stressed out. When are they gonna see their kids? After work, before work, you know? That's either when you're really tired or you just woke up from being really tired, mm -hmm. you know? Like it, it's a means of what, what as a society is causing this, you mm -hmm. know? And for me to ask somebody questions that is gonna help improve their lives shouldn't be taken in an irritating way, you know? Cause none of us are perfect at mm -hmm. the end of the day. Everybody can improve. It doesn't matter if you improved yesterday, it doesn't matter if you are going to improve the next day, mm -hmm. regardless, even if you improve, there's something else that can be improved. Mm -hmm. So it, it is not wrong to think that we are not good enough because no matter what you are good enough, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that you can't improve. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's how I see it. As long as I can keep people improving in my life and, and loving the idea of improving, then I'm going to love the idea and then I'm going to want to improve. Yeah. And, uh, 
And to me, that's like the, the beautiful part about yeah. it. And if, if someone isn't there yet, you know, that's okay. And then that's where I, I struggle because like, I don't know how not <laughs> to talk about those things, you know? Because so you get excited about it. I get excited about it too, but you're more of an extrovert than I am that for me, it's easier for me to listen than to actually talk. So I'm, I prefer listening for you. It's the complete opposite. So if we're having that conversation, bro, I'll let you take the reins. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm gravy. I'm, I'm chilling, you know? I'm into the conversation and then I'll respond um, with something that you've just given me and, you know, and then we'll keep going. But you know, it's more of a, I think we've spoken about this as well. Like when it comes to our, like our powers, as far as like our, 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 the things that we want to do that we're so used to doing that sometimes it becomes our weakness, you know, mm -hmm. cause my weakness is not wanting to talk. So what did I have to do? I had to learn how to talk. So to strengthen my powers and listening, I had to learn how to talk too, to respond so that I can make the person in front of me feel comfortable. For you, it's the opposite. You have to learn how to listen <laughs> rather than continuously <laughs> talking because you're you're talking in the in a in certain um, scenarios or if not scenarios in topics that most people don't even come across. You know, like you actually read about this stuff. You're looking for it. Most people don't look or Google this stuff. You know, it's just not yeah. a daily thing for them. So when they hear you out, just they're still stuck on that first topic that you brought up, and you're already on like the last or 50th topic and you're just keep going, keep going. Yeah. So it's just more of just like, okay, understanding like, okay, are they really paying attention or are they just thinking, you know, because it does become overwhelming for certain people. No, that's fair because the only reason why I went on a journey of uh, improving myself was because I met somebody that was like a father figure to me mm -hmm. and he, he like just stopped me in my tracks and was like, do you read? And I was like, <laughs> do you no. Read? No, I don't. I mean, I can read. I have the ability <laughs> to, but I don't just pick up a book and say, oh, wow, you know, let me, let me get into this. And then he said, okay, would you read one book? And I was like, I, I guess. And he said, well, this one book out of the thousand books that I've read, this singular book has changed my perspective on life. And I was like, really, Steve? Like, bro, you're like Superman to me. If this book changed your life and I could be more like you, 100%. And then he was like, okay, the book is called The Power of Habit. And I was like, all right, all right. And he's like, are you gonna buy it? I said, probably not. And he <laughs> said, okay, then I'm gonna let you borrow it, but you have to read it. And that book literally changed my life. Mm. That literally, like the way that I perceive life, the way that I perceived my friends, family, society, everything changed yeah. after I read that book. And, um, and he even saw it and he knows like he plays that role in my life. He said, oh, look, look at this little guy I created over here making a mess now. He said, look at you, you know, he's so proud of me. But um, that is like, I was given that in life. And sometimes people that have father figures in their life take them for granted as to where for me that was a blessing. And it was, it came into my life when I'd stopped looking for it. Mm -hmm. And it came into my life just in the most pivotal point of mm -hmm. my life. So because of that, like me and some friends opened up an uh, uh, athletic center, mm -hmm. you know, and that was called height, mm -hmm. right? And that that was beautiful, it was fun. It was gymnastics, break dancing, mm -hmm. massage, and it was just this little business. And it was me like opening my eyes to like, holy crap, like we just built a bathroom. Like we just built a gymnasium. So we just built a dance studio. Mm -hmm. like. And prior to that, I never would have thought that I would have done it. Mm -hmm. But then understanding that like, just keep going 1% a day, mm -hmm. that's all you need. And then before you know it, at the end of the year, that 1% has grown far more than you expected. Mm -hmm. Because the 1% is also increasing every day. You know, every yeah. day you put 1%, you need to do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then that really shapes you and changes you. And as long as you remain consistent, whoever you want to be, whatever you want to accomplish, it, it will be done, mm -hmm. you know? It's like a snowball effect. Like it starts small and then over time it just becomes larger and larger and larger. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, like you said, you have this whole gym build, like you have a whole. Now, the scary part is habit has no moral compass. So if you are not doing that and you're doing something of the opposite and you're being lazy or something, that's gonna snowball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people don't want to acknowledge that, mm -hmm. you know? And progress only seems hard when the snowball has gotten so big in the other direction. Mm -hmm. And really though, as long as you put 1% a day into whatever it is that you want to do, that other snowball is gonna melt away. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna become a very small, in insignificant snowball. And the other one will be so much bigger that it will just absorb that snowball. Mm -hmm. 
but you just need to remain consistent. And, and that's the thing. That's, it's very hard. Very, mm-hmm. very hard yeah. to stay consistent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, man, even if it's like, a, like, here's a gross one. I wasn't in the habit of brushing my teeth, mm. you know? Gross. Like, it's gross, yeah. And it wasn't until I went to the dentist a few years back that I was like, oh, no, 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 this is bad. Gingivitis. Yeah, they <laughs> cleaned my teeth, and I said, I didn't even know that there was room down there. And, uh, and then it, 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 like, spooked me, you know? I said, wow, my teeth got really bad, and I didn't even notice. Um, so building the habit of brushing your teeth twice a day at first that did not come and like at the end of the week I was like oh no my face getting hot like my teeth are gonna go bad you know <laughs> that consistency like it, it it was hard as something as simple as keeping your teeth clean mm. you know so then you, you want to change your life and you, you want to put all these good habits into place mm-hmm. you have to understand it's gonna take a while mm-hmm. it's yeah. not gonna be easy it is simple though Mm. It is really simple. It's just not easy. Mm-hmm. I so. think also people are so set on like the actual like final result. It's like, I want to do this for this. And they're just staring at like the actual final end result and not looking at the little bits and pieces that it takes every day to get to that point. And right. they feel like if they're not seeing that huge change or that huge shift, there's not anything happening. Yeah. And it's like, there is stuff happening. It's just, you're getting there. You just yeah. got to like so one step at a time. There's a book uh, called The Atomic Habit. And they go over that because people think that learning is a, it just goes straight up like in a diagonal mm-hmm. line, right? Mm-hmm. And whatever you do, but really it's a curve down and then it goes way up, you know? And the, the increase is, is so much higher than just like kind of a diagonal line. But that dip that you have, they call it the valley of disappointment. And it's that time frame where you're doing something for so long and you want progress, but it seems like there's nothing. Mm. Yeah. If you look at the detail, there will be something there, mm-hmm. but it's so it's so minor because you are slowly building up to it. You know, mm-hmm. it's the same thing, that little snowball. You know, that's how you're not gonna be able to throw that sucker at anybody and it's gonna hurt, you mm-hmm. know, like <laughs> I think it'll be tiny, it's a little yeah. piece of ice. Um, but that valley of disappointment really gets to people. And if you can understand that and you start looking for the cue of the ending of that valley, then you're gonna be able to enjoy the process more, Mm -hmm. understanding the step-by-step of it. The biggest issue is, you're correct, people are so obsessed with that end goal Mm -hmm. that the means of the process is completely forgotten Mm -hmm. when that's what needs to be respected the most. That's exactly what I was gonna say. I was like, enjoy the process and the journey to actually get to your end goal. And then once you get to the end goal, just understand that's not the end. That's literally that new beginning. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like it, it's like getting food, you know, you waiting for that food. If you cook it <laughs> as a man, you, mm, you smell good. hungry. Good. <laughs> Jeez, you know, you feel it. You feel all happy. You can't wait to eat. Yeah. But after you eat, you said, man, I'm done. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dang. I feel good, you know, got those and, calories. Yeah. And then it's done. It's over, <laughs> you know? So the end goal, it, it is always in, in your perspective, way sweeter than it is when it actually comes. Yeah, for sure. Because it's a bittersweet ending. Yeah, you know? and that, that's something that I'm learning right now too. I was, I'm enjoying enjoying the journey that I'm, what we're doing is we're growing something. But there are days that I'm like, bro, like God, like every morning there's something, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's something like, all right, just keep going, consistent. You know, just one day at a time. You know. Yeah. But then there are days I have to slow down and actually just look at what has been grown already so that I could say, okay, we didn't have this last year or we didn't have this uh, a yeah. couple of years or whatever. Um, so now it's more of like, okay, for me, it's, it's enjoying the journey, but also respecting, like you said, um, but also slowing it down so that I could actually see what the journey has brought me. See it, appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then honestly, man, like if you just write it down, you could have your own little makeshift story. Like right. That's a beautiful thing about experience, right? Mm-hmm. Every book that you read is just a, a means of an experience told in a different way. Mm-hmm. You know, like Lord of the Rings, all of those little different places are based off of places in Africa. Mm-hmm. And it's like, these are real places mm-hmm. just changed to fit the story. And, th- and that's everybody, mm-hmm. you know, like you have a story that can be told. You have a story that we can told. You guys got a story that can be told. And it's just, it is what it is. You know, mm-hmm. it's just a means of, I guess that to me in my head, that is being in the moment when you're witnessing the journey, the process, mm-hmm. you know that the end goal is in the future, but you're not concerned with that. The yeah. process is what is most important, yeah. you know? Yeah. No, I agree. I definitely agree as far as like what we were going through right now, it's everything that we're doing is new. You know, everything that I'm doing is new as far as like when it comes to the business side. <clears throat> and we speak about this mostly 
f- fairly consistent within this podcast. Like, I don't know what I'm doing half the time. <laughs> like, I'm literally learning as I go, like how to navigate this. Um, being an introvert, I've, I'm managing people, bro. Like, really, like I have to talk to people now. Like, just going to IKEA gave me an anxiety. I was like, I, I don't even want to be here, <laughs> and that's yeah. IKEA. Now, yeah. imagine having to be in front of like crowds of business people. Like now, I'm like, okay, what the heck happened? Like, you're where? Where are you? Like, I, I'm, I'm like, I don't even know how this happened. To be honest with you, I'm like, what the heck? Like, yeah. See, business is also just like a different realm in itself as well. Because mm-hmm. like, I mean, sure, I can be an extrovert, but put me in a room full of realtors, I'll get quiet real quick. You know, <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna be talking about prices, all these different things to do. I was like, oh, you didn't set them up with this, this and that. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, no, nope, mm-hmm. no, no. What are you saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, this is Chinese to me, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. But also too though, that Chinese is a lot more understandable too, the more you spend with these realtors mm-hmm. as well, you know? Well, so. you actually start noticing that they're just like us. So half of the stuff that they are actually saying, it's just uh, something that they've heard already. And that's where I would come in. That's how I started, where they would repeat the information that they were actually either read, heard, or seen somewhere from another realtor, and they were trying to put it into a video. And then I would have to say, I have no idea what you just said. So let's break it down a little bit, where <laughs> me as a consumer is going to be able to actually understand. captivate and then actually understand what you're trying to sell, or if not, give out as far as your information. And that's one of the things that I noticed right away that I was good at, you know, not navigating a crowd, but at least directing one person. And then from that direction, it it gave me confidence to actually say, okay, if I could do it with one person, maybe I could do it with another person. And then consistently, like, I'm like, okay, now I'm building <clears throat> myself to be more like uh, more assertive as far as like in front of a crowd. But I still feel very anxious when there's too many people around, bro, you should tell psh, Ikea, bro, it almost, it broke me. Like, nah, nah, really? it was too much for me. I like I was, like it was, and I was like, yeah, there's, like, yeah. there's too many people, like way yeah. too many people. Yeah. Like I had to pull out my phone. I'm like, bro, I need to get distracted. Cause this is way too many. Like it was too many noises, too many people around me, too many colors. I'm like, bro, it's just furniture. Like this is way, this like overwhelming, like, like, and that's me, like when it comes to crowds. Yeah. So it's more of like, I could either make it my weakness or make it my strength. And I'm deciding to make it my strength where I'm like, okay, let people not notice it. So it's energy that I'm going to use so I could continuously do something else. So like, let me see what I could use that anxiety towards something good. Um, but yeah, like I said, like crowds, nah, I hate crowds. Yeah. Disneyland, forget about it. <laughs> forget about oh, yeah. it. <laughs> <Disneyland>. <laughs> I ain't going to Disneyland. Oh man. <laughs> no, see, I love crowds. I remember years ago at uh, Six Flags Horror Nights, Mm. They had like a little screaming competition, and I when I was <laughs> younger, screaming? yeah, yeah, they they said to you know give us your scariest scream or something, and uh, <laughs> and I remember as a youngster I was really into like the the crazy like Suicide Silence, mm. Winds of Plagues and stuff, so I knew how to do like the inhale high pitched scream, and I just did it as loud as I could into the mic, and everyone was like, oh my god, what? like it was like a I don't know if you guys have ever seen Thirty Days of Night, mm-hmm. it was like that vampire, oh, okay, scream, okay, okay, you okay. know, yeah, yeah. and. Uh, and I did it, and the crowd's like, oh, I'm going all crazy. I ended up going on stage to do a corn <laughs> eating contest. What? Like, that was like the prelims. And it's like, all right, now you're in the real contest. And, you know, my That's ass, I love eating, man. Like, my friends get so mad because I stayed small, but but eating, mm-hmm. you know, eating like crazy. And I, I destroyed that corn eating contest, burned the hell out of my mouth. But, I mean, that crowd around me, like, it's the exact opposite of you. Like, get mm-hmm. off their energy. Oh, my God. Yeah, I yeah, am yeah. the social battery. Yeah, yeah. Like, give me like, your energy. You. Yeah, it drains me for sure. It gives you energy. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I either I read it or I saw it on a video where an introvert, we, we start with the glass full and you guys start with an extrovert starts with the glass empty in the morning. So for me, I'm technically giving out my energy, but it has to be specific because if I drain it too much, that's my whole day. But for you, you're building your energy off of the energy of others. So crowds are uh, socializing with other people. So you're building your energy through that, you know, like if it was a cup, so that water is your energy for me, it's already filled up. So I wake up with energy, but literally the more that I talk or socialize with, with yeah, interact with people. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) That's what an extrovert is. So I have to be really careful as far as like, where I go and how I navigate life, because I know if I consistently just waste my energy, it's gonna be useless throughout the day, you know? 
Yeah. So I'm consistently just thinking about what am I going to do? Who am I going to interact with? And it's not like I um, thought about this my whole life. It's just more of this, like, why am I like this? You know, I don't want to be that weird person in the corner all the time. <laughs> the <laughs> quiet kid in the back of the class. more intentional with your energy. You now it's more intentional because reactions. I understand what it is. You know, yeah. I understand what, what an introvert is, an extrovert is. So from when I was in high school, it was more of like, maybe I'm self-conscious. Maybe it, maybe I just don't like myself and that's why I don't like talking to people, but that's a negative thought process that I had to kind of step away from by actually now understanding, you know, human behavior and psychology and all this stuff. So that's kind of why I like that stuff or that topic of conversation as well, because then you start to understand why certain things align the way that they align rather than just guessing, I guess, blindfolded. So I would rather say like, okay, I'm this way and this is how I need to navigate in order to protect myself so that I could not only consume what I need to consume properly, but also navigate life properly as well and make the choices that I need to make in the future in the proper way, in the manner that my my energy kind of like would allow me to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, because if like yourself, if I'm in the crowd, bro, like that's nah, nah, <laughs> I'm like, I'm out, I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the first guy to like show up late at a party, first guy to leave at a party. Like I'm just in and out like, okay, hi, 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 show face, I'm bouncing. I feel like if I can't function, okay, so like I went to that party with you, right? I am. But a uh, bunch of people, you know, like I'm probably one of the only people there that doesn't speak Spanish and that's okay. You know, ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, I love the music, you know, I love the, the hats and everything. You know? <laughs> the hats. Oh yeah, it's a fucking cowboy hat. Everyone <laughs> looking like they're ready to throw a lasso at me. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, I love the energy, you know, and, but same thing, if I can't talk and I can't communicate, then I feel like, damn, what am I doing here? Mm-hmm. You know, and like I, I've grown a habit of, of wanting to have conversations with people because either I could be helped in some way that mm-hmm. is unknown to me or mm-hmm. I could help someone out that mm-hmm. is unknown to me as well, mm-hmm. you know, and that is something that I feed off of, like the energy of giving somebody something that they can carry the rest of their life with mm-hmm. them. And it's not material, it's a, like perspective, change the way that they view life. To me, that's so that's so rewarding. Like I'll take that over anything, you know? Maybe not food, but damn near anything, you know? <laughs> that's food for th- like your mind. Exactly, you know? Like you know? Your body. But. Yeah, and, and we don't, you know, we don't know what, what happens, you know? One day I may have like a little child and that little child is gonna be so annoyed because I'm gonna be talking its little ear off, you know? It's gonna <laughs> like, be super quiet. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be so quiet. It's gonna be a little extra. It's not gonna wanna talk. Yeah. yeah. I'll start talking by the age of like three months or something. Yeah, probably. Start, I'll be like, Dad, Dad. He's gonna, dream, he's gonna talk, talk so much, you're not gonna wanna so talk scary. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be telling me all these dreams. I'm like, man, I screwed this little kid up. <laughs> now I know how everyone else feels. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, fun little story. I literally had, I was going to Fresno when I was a youngster. And I was with my Uncle Ray, my first time meeting him. So excited, Uncle Ray, this, this, and that. And Uncle Ray, you know, Pokemon, you know, da, 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 da. And <laughs> man, when we got to Fresno, he was like, my mom just said, this guy does not shut up. <laughs> I was like, just happy, like, yeah, I don't shut up. <laughs> and then on the way back, right when we got on the freeway, he's all like, we're gonna play a game. I'm gonna give you 20 bucks if you don't say anything until we get there. Like, really 20 bucks okay <laughs> five minutes later <laughs> uncle ray da, 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 da. <laughs> said, I'm gonna strangle this kid man. <laughs> you lost 20 dollars yeah no he gave you the 20 bucks All he right. said you didn't deserve this but here you go <laughs> it's a true uncle ray <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was it was funny but yeah as, as a kid i just i love speaking and it took time to get older and um it was actually learning about habits and me being excited telling my friends about themselves mm from the habits that I noticed, I said, wow, this is what you do. You know, a lot of those people are not ready to hear that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know, Mm -hmm. you know, at the time it was exciting. Mm -hmm. I said, wow, bro, I'm understanding who I am. And through this way of habit and and identifying others, bro, I could tell you more about you than you could tell me about you. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's it's so exciting. But to them, it was not. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) They weren't interested or it was just like an It was overwhelming. Overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say like 20% of the people that I had brought this information to, um, accepted it and it changed their lives Mm -hmm. um the other 80 percent i mean most of those people don't even talk to me anymore Mm. Um, speaking of habits closer to the mic 
Por favor. <laughs> you keep Give going further and further back. So you had like a breakthrough <laughs> in terms of like your thought process and like your understanding of like the, you know, the way that our mind works and all yeah. of that. And you just didn't have anyone to like actually talk to it about. Really, exactly. Like oh, digest exactly. information with. Yeah. So it, it was uh, me. Those people. So they're not like you don't even like. A lot of those people don't talk to me anymore. They're not in your life anymore. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Some of those people like legit just like dislike me now because, because of that. Because of that experience. So there's yeah. like a shift in your life that came out of this. You life. just outgrew them. You just kind of. You yeah. can say, yeah, outgrew them. Yeah, um, outgrew them. Sharing information with others that want to do better, but once that information is presented to them, they go back and mm. they they almost allow themselves to forget those conversations mm -hmm. so that they don't have to take account for them. Yeah. yeah. And that, that is the most uh, repetitive thing that has happened for the people that actually took this information and changed their lives, their lives. Have, the, the one that I'm most proud of is my friend JR and I lived with him for like maybe six months, you know, and I taught him about habit, auto suggestion, and then just gave him some books to read. And after he read those, he went from trying to be a streamer at home with like 30 viewers to making like, five to seven and a half K a month. Mm. And like now he's wow. like so grateful that like every month he's hitting me up like, yo, Jay, how you doing, man? You know, what's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, how's the photography going? Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> and he's just like very excited about life. His, his, his mom, his aunts, like they're all thankful for me doing that. But to me, it's not, it's not about like uh, their gratitude. It's like, you could do this all along. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't do anything. All I did was present the information to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You you did the research. You tested it out in your own ways to prove to yourself that it was real. All I did was lead you to the water. And I, as I try to lead everybody into my life mm -hmm. and whether or not you drink it, it's solely up to you. If you do or don't, it mm -hmm. don't matter. You know, I'm going to be happy if you do. And if you don't, I'm not going to be upset. It is yeah. what it is, you know. Yeah. But that just means you ain't never tasted that water. You don't know how much flavor it has. You don't mm. know how much power this water has, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. But you can't <laughs> yeah. force people, you know. No. Exactly. <coughs> and if you try, own, yeah. yeah, if you try, the more resistance and the longer it takes for them to actually do it. You yeah. Know? You got to. And that's where, as well as through time, I learned to take the step back, yeah. you know, and um, let conversation go as it was. Um and then I got lucky enough to find out that my grandfather was a psychologist of like 50 years and he had like five practices in Fresno and learning that later in my life and building a relationship with him later in my life was like, holy shit, like I did all of this work and I've, I've accumulated all this information and talking to him about it. He's just like, what the fuck? Like, you didn't go to school for this? I was like, no, I didn't go to school for this, man. And like him explaining his stories and, um, even when it comes to the idea of like manifestation, psychotherapy, um, hypnotherapy, my bad, hypnotherapy has worked and like the stories that he's told me have been mind blowing. And I said, once again, this is just the mind being more powerful than we are set to believe, you know? And this idea of manifestation, like what is it doing? It's just, it's just your thought creating direction. Mm -hmm. And that's just how powerful the mind can be, mm -hmm. you know? And all of those things are like beautiful and it made me, like realize like sure i may have lost people but somewhere down the line they may that conversation may just randomly boop yeah and they might be like this motherfucker was right you know yeah. <laughs> or they might be like i hate i hate that i'm gonna try this but let me try this yeah, you yeah, know? yeah and and that's what's most important you know if you can get your life and make it to be everything that you wanted it to be because of some information that i shared with you mm -hmm. hell yeah like, yeah you're still fairly young so i'm pretty sure some of these people that you let go they're they're definitely going to come back at some point yeah. in your life once they actually start realizing hey maybe i should get more mature and start doing something with my life and then they'll start to realize okay maybe i shouldn't have been so crude or whatever yeah. dismissive as far as like the topics of conversation that uh jordan was giving me um but even if they don't acknowledge me and their life becomes uh, as much in their grasp as it can be, mm -hmm. to me, that's still fulfilling. Yeah. Even if you don't want mm -hmm. to acknowledge it, I, mm -hmm. I know we had that conversation. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And there are people that are going to not learn from their mistakes or whatever, and they're just going to continuously live the, that type of life, which is fine. Um, I've let go of so many friends um, throughout the years that I'm okay with it now. Like we're in the beginning, it was harder because they were in my life consistently um, through like the rough times where, where I was growing up. So it almost seemed like I was putting my back against them, but essentially you have to protect yourself as well 
to understand like, hey, this environment isn't what where I need to go as far as like I can't carry everybody with me. They need to understand that they need to carry themselves if they want to walk with me as well. Yeah. Um, and like I said, a lot of the friends that I've had in the past are now coming back, but now they're actually realizing as far as like what we're building, they're like, oh, maybe you are right. That same conversations as far as like what you're saying, um, but lead through example too, you know, not just yeah. through words and people will see it and then they'll start navigating towards you again. So um, that's yeah. the only thing that, cause we have these conversations all the time as yeah. far as like um, going back to your, you being an extrovert, me being an, um, an introvert, yeah. you know, and our superpowers and our weaknesses and all that stuff. So it's one of those things like, I know where you're at in your life right now because I've been there as well. The only difference is you're more talkative <laughs> and I'm a lot more quieter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in the realms of thought, we're kind of similar. And that's kind of where we've connected from day one. Like literally, I remember you came in to do the interview and you were talking to me about uh, what you were doing the day before as far as like you being in Mojave and uh, you know, not getting in contact <laughs> with your friend. Earlier the same day. <laughs> yeah. <actually. laughs> and going through the whole story <laughs> and then me just going through the interview as far as like an interview like, oh, did you go to school for this? Um, what do you see yourself doing in a couple of years? Um, where have you lived? Like basic questions. And then we started just having a typical conversation and I'm like, oh, I'm into like human behavior studies. And you're like, really? And then from there we just clicked. Yeah. Like literally from there, it it was no longer an interview. It was just a conversation between two people that just met a couple of minutes ago. And now we became friends because you're like, oh, finally, I could talk to somebody as far as like you what I'm actually saying. <laughs> well, let me tell you about habits. You know? <laughs> literally how you are <laughs> no i mean here here's the thing that people don't realize they think that i'm like lecturing them but it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. dude i'm so passionate about habits because it changed my life mm -hmm. you know so it has not like sadly it has a lot less to do with the person that i'm talking to and it has a lot more to do with just my own uh connection and attachment to habits yeah you know just as someone like sports you know you um, get excited and you like really want to talk about it and like yeah, out there. yeah, and mm -hmm. I couldn't do that with sports because it's like, oh yeah, you know, this guy owns a team and they hire these players and these players play for this mm -hmm. team and people get so attached to them. But it's like, what does the team do for you? Mm -hmm. You know, like the okay. most that it's going to do for you is going to entertain you, and then you might be able to bet on it. But that's that's a gamble. Mm -hmm. So it's like this: it draws you in for you to gamble, <laughs> for you to put something mm -hmm. that you actually worked hard for um, on the line for an attachment that is meant for you to be attached to it. It's meant to feed off of your desire uh, to be entertained and your desire for connection. You know? That comes with everything though that we actually have when now that we're in modern modern times and everything, we have a lot of things that are given to us up front. Um, entertainment, you know, like sports, um, yeah. video games, you know, social media. Mm -hmm. So we attach ourselves to that one item and we think, hey, I'm good at playing this video game or this game. And in reality, you're not really gaining nothing from it. You know, it's like, unless you're actually going full on to actually make money, but you've invested all this time for what, you know? Yeah. So it's just one of those things like it, you have to understand that the things that are given to us, it is for entertainment and comfort, but not to overuse. And we tend to kind of stay within our comfort and a lot of people are, are in their comfort zone right now. And that's what I'm noticing. As far as like, I know this became a fruition for me because every other photographer made it so easy for me. You know, everyone wanted to do their entrepreneurship whenever they felt like it, you know, whenever they, they weren't tired, whenever they weren't sick, whenever, you know, when, whenever it was convenient for them. Yeah. So there were photographers, I'm gonna say like at least two that I knew of at the time um, when I first started real estate photography, but they weren't fully in, fully in, in like invested. They were just doing it whenever they felt like it, like I said, and I came in and I was looking and I'm like, oh, the one thing that I am good at is working. So, you know, I'm, I, I know how to use a camera, so I know what I'm gonna need to do to actually do do it where they're not at at this point. And uh, like I said, it just becomes more of a comfort, you know, like yeah. a lot of people are just so comfortable in their little, I don't know, their little lives that they don't understand that maybe if you just get out of the comfort zone to understand what, what you could do if you sacrifice certain things, you know, and that's yeah. one of these things that people don't know, understand either is like to be great at something, you have to sacrifice certain things that may normalize, um, social, social constructs or whatever, as yeah, far as it like, prevents you from like a lot of mm -hmm. social, 
events and yeah because which for me it's fine because i don't even want to go out so <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm that's, chilling that's where it works out for you i'm guys. chilling it's for me it's <laughs> tough i say i struggle with it because it's like yeah you're saying like i feel like the more i interact with people the more energy mm -hmm. i get the more like i like want to be doing stuff and like i get like really hyped right mm -hmm. and yeah. then it's like so for me it's like okay like i can't go to that event because i should be like just going out and taking photos or i shouldn't do this i shouldn't like mm -hmm. let me not hang out with my friends this weekend like and that's been a challenge for mm -hmm. me to kind of like pull myself away from that yeah yeah and that's just that's i would say that's your superpower but that's also your weakness my superpower is work oriented <laughs> yeah. but it's also my weakness because it could lead me to being alone which loneliness comes when see you don't it, yeah. see it you know yeah. like when the day is done and i'm literally in my room like oh shit, i'm no one to talk to now <laughs> you know that kind of thing so it is my superpower but it's also my weakness okay. so that's where i have to I make sure balance. yeah i have to make sure and i have to understand that i do need to socialize you know i have to break that barrier for myself to actually like maybe you should go to that party even if you don't feel like it you know i know you're gonna feel uncomfortable but you never know who you're gonna meet just do it you're yeah, gonna show up late could be your you know soulmate. that in and out that kind of thing so those are the things that i self-analyze for myself just because i know how i am like i said the photographers that i've worked with in the past they made it easy because their superpower was not work ethic yeah. their superpower was their creativity so they took that for granted thinking that just their creativity alone was going to lead them to success mine was my work ethic is my superpower and my creativity i'm going to combine them together and I'm going to overpass you because I work every day consistently, whatever type of weather it is, however I feel, if I'm feeling lazy, depressed, sad, whatever, I am going to go to work. But I have to also understand that there's also a lot more to life than just work. <laughs> so yeah, those yeah. are the things that I have to kind of relay to myself to say, hey, just chill, go out you know go yeah. socialize go meet some stranger on the street and just say <laughs> hi to them you never know yeah that's literally never been my issue yeah like i can come across somebody and like just complete stranger now we're talking for the past three hours and mm -hmm. it's like oh shit, bro you have a good day man i'm, I'm out of <laughs> here like like i've done that on multiple occasions mm -hmm. but to me it's like everybody has a gem mm -hmm. like literally everybody has a gem and if you miss out on that gem, that gem might not come back again, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just how I see it. I love, I love picking at people's minds. Oh, same, um, same. Yeah. It, it is just like, yeah, that weird part of me being too talkative to where sometimes I'd be picking people's minds and they're like, ow, ow, okay, stop, <laughs> you know, know your boundaries, boy, <laughs> like, yeah. oh, my bad, you know, shit. <laughs> but, uh, do you feel like you've gotten better navigating that? Like now that you've kind of, it's been a few years that you're like, from or, the beginning yeah, absolutely <laughs> absolutely you were worse uh, like before you actually like <laughs> it was worse like, already like he spoke like, okay i think without speaking a little like well before be i would like i didn't know why people were upset with me like okay. when uh, i was younger when i first this information yeah. was new you know i'd be like yo why doesn't she like me you know like <laughs> she literally came to me to talk you yeah. know i i understand who she is you know yeah. like or the best that i could right now it's like, did you not like what I had to say? You know, because like now that we are where we're at right now in life, most of those people are exactly where I thought they would be. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like you can get mad at me, but I I did have a pretty good guess. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you're okay with it and you like the life that you live, one hundred percent. But if you feel like you're unfulfilled, you feel like you should be doing more, you feel like life just isn't what you thought it was, mm -hmm. it's because you're making it something that it's not. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people don't, those uncomfortable truths, they're so used to being comfortable mm -hmm. that they, they're not ready for the discomfort. Yeah. You know? And you never know what's going to come at you when you actually break out of that comfort zone. Because a lot of things that I've done literally would be more based off of an, an extrovert, you know, playing music, being in front of crowds. Um, meeting friends like right now we have danny in the house right now hey he was my original photographer for my band um oh, what? yeah he was the guy that when i didn't even know how to use the camera yet he was the one taking photos for my band and then i think he started doing videos for us as well um he's and, your ricky yeah he's, your ricky. <laughs> <laughs> he's my robin <laughs> so as far as like back in the day i used to teach uh lessons to kids like doing guitar and i met him through his brother but even teaching like that's me being the leader or being the mentor 
of a young person and teaching them what I love doing. So I always put myself in situations where I had to have grown out of that little by little. I'm still that introvert, but you won't, you won't really see it as much as you would have if you would have met me in high school. Mm -hmm. Now, when I came and spoke to Danny, I remember I was like, bro, like, I don't want to ask. Cause I, what do you say? Like, do you want to do this for free? I don't have money back then. I didn't have money. You know, it was like one of those things, like, how do you navigate that negotiation of like, could you take photos for my band for free because I'm broke and you know, we need this for marketing. But literally I be, I stepped up and I'm like, Hey, yo, Danny, like your brother told me that you do photos and he's like, bro, like, I'm there. So from there, like he would go to the, to the studios with us. He would go to some of the shows with us. So he was literally there and we became friends. And through that process, I then picked up the camera and now mm -hmm. I'm the photographer <laughs> and I'm the videographer, but stepping out of my comfort, I didn't, I wouldn't have met him or the people that I've met currently now. So I would say to anybody out there, that's either an extrovert net introvert is just get out of your comfort, you know, just get out of your little shell, whatever it is that is going in your head, just get out of it. Little by little, you don't have to jump the cliff right away. You just like, just take it one step at a time. And then from there, you'll start to notice like people will come into your life that will change it in a way that you won't even understand it. You know, small things like just taking pictures for my band, you know, it was something so small, but literally we needed it at that time because we were trying to market our band on Facebook, Instagram, and then making flyers for the shows that we needed. So it was something so small, but it stayed with me to the point where now he's still here. We mounted a TV, me and Danny, you know, he's still around these little sound panels. He helped me out. I, <laughs> Anything that I need I, help of, I could, I could I, call him and bro, we're still, we're still homies. Yeah. Like that, that was like years ago. I'm going to say eight years ago, maybe nine years ago that I met him. And that's all, that's one of those friendships that a lot of people don't get to have at this point, yeah. Yeah. you know, those yeah. supporters like, okay, but I wouldn't have never met him if I would have stayed quiet, you know? Yeah. yeah so you never sure. know. Yeah. yeah. And there's times where I stayed quiet and I met people because I was <laughs> quiet. <laughs> Use your superpower. Yeah, I said, <laughs> said, man, this guy gets it, bro. He's quiet. And yeah. I said, dang, dude, I was just really tired that day. I, <laughs> I just really generally tired. don't shut up, but you know, hey, he caught me on one of those days. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> Looking back on just to conclude the the podcast, because I know we have <laughs> things to do. <laughs> I know we could long at this podcast forever. Um, but just to conclude the podcast, is there anything that you would say that you would want to actually announce to anybody out there that you may want to motivate or maybe at that age that you were in at the time that you were kind of coming up before you read the book? Before you read the book, is there something that you could say that could resonate to that young Jordan? that was 18 or 19 at the time that I know is listening to us at this point. That's the the idea of this podcast is the, the, the amount of demographic that we're hitting right now is not only the business, but also the, the young kids that are the creatives. Yeah. Um, I think the, it just goes with the, um, okay. So, before all this last night, right? I had a conversation with a guy who helped me get my first car. He's like, and he's a, went to high school with my mom, right? Mm -hmm. And he's a great guy. His name's Ray. His son, uh, just like a month ago, killed himself. Mm. He's like 21 years old. Wow. And um, he was an introvert for sure. Didn't really know what to say to people. Had people reaching out. Never had a girlfriend. Was very stuck in this box, mm. in this in this weird kind of reality that we got going on. Um, one thing that's helped me through all it's it's a it's a quote. It's a, with every adversity carries a seed to an equal or greater opportunity. Mm. And I feel like at times people get in the habit of a gloom and doom mentality, and it becomes almost like when when I was younger, it was cool to be depressed. And that's like, we had a whole a look for it. You mm -hmm. know, you'd be seen, emo, mm -hmm. all that. It, it was a trend to be depressed. Mm -hmm. um, but then there are people who lived in depression. And when they get to be a young adult, they, they see the world in a completely different lens. And that depression stays and it sticks and it can lead to very bad decisions. To me, that that is adversity. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at life and say, this is shit, you know you can change the lens. You don't have to keep the same lens. And, and I think a lot of people don't understand that. 
and it, it is a means of it's simple it's just consistent so whatever is happening in life like that will pass you know no matter what so remind yourself like in every bad situation there is a means of a good situation that can come out of it so don't give up just give up on the bad mentality give up on the negativity mm-hmm. now give more into positivity encouraging yourself mm-hmm. and understand at the end of the day it is nobody's job to motivate you mm-hmm. it is solely your own mm-hmm. so never rely on motivation to keep you going rely on yourself to keep you going mm-hmm. and ultimately that's what it is you know don't allow the negativity of life to take over <laughs> you know be strong feed yourself with positivity yeah and then know. fall on others that that will love you mm-hmm. you know and if you don't have anyone that will love you, you know, my name's Jordan. You know, I love all of you guys. I'll, uh, you know, I got a big, warm heart. You know, I don't got that long of arms, but I can give you a nice big hug. Um, <laughs> but there's always people there that, that will love yeah. you and care for you. And um, if you really feel like there's nobody there as well, man, just look at God. Look mm-hmm. at these people that have found religion in their life, that, that found a means of divine energy, you know, uh, a means of peace of mind. You know, seek Seek before you give up. Seek. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. Well, so, yeah. yeah. Any last words, Miss Ariana? No, just thank you for joining us, Jordan. And thank it's been fun having you on the team. And I look forward to everything else that's gonna come from all of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So all the realtors out there that haven't <laughs> met Jordan, hopefully you'll see uh, our podcast. Um, you know, we're just growing the YouTube channel and Spotify and everything. So it's not we're not hitting the numbers that we're hitting now, but you know little by little day by day one podcast at a time so it's you know it's just progress so thank you so much jordan for everything that you've been doing you know for being a good friend and also for being a good uh photographer and then eventually you're gonna be really good at videography Videography. as well so that's gonna be the next step for you and And then eventually i'll be making my own movies exactly (laughs) getting that that new honda I'm sticking to no more Hondas. <laughs> I get the money. We out this Honda game. Right, no get, more. Getting that Toyota. <laughs> then. Getting that Toyota and Ford. I'm getting my damn Tesla. All right, I'll get, get that, my damn Tesla. Get that Tesla then. Get that Tesla. <laughs> <Self-driving>. <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Um, we will have, uh, actually, we have a list of people for this year. So hopefully, I think we have nine guests that we're trying to hit for this year. We're trying our best as far as like with our schedules. Um, you know, it's just very hectic for us to even just put in our calendar, like time off just because consistency of work that we get, but we'll get through everything. Hopefully, like I said, you'll get to meet the whole team as far as like the people that we bring in. Um, hopefully Jordan and Israel come back as far as like as an, another guest yeah. or an, and co-host, <laughs> co-host. Yeah. exactly. And that's, mm. that's the point of this podcast as well as like, I don't want it to be where it's just my image as far as like InView Media. Ari's been a big benefactor as far as like the progress and growth of InView Media. So I want people to actually start to see her, not just as, you know, the editor or the person that sends invoices. It's like literally if it weren't for her, half of the stuff (laughs) (laughs) like that light right there she ordered that light i didn't order that light you know (laughs) let's go so little by little you know like we we are all contributing to the growth of uh to the growth of this and then you know you and israel and of course and anyone else that's gonna literally stay within the team well i what i want is i want you guys to be the face not just me you know inview media is not just a person it's an entity of people a group so hopefully that that continues and you know like the podcast is so that the realtors new clients and of course like demographics of young kids young creators could actually see what we're doing and listen to maybe the things that we've been going through you know not just the good but also the bad Mm -hmm. and then relate in some way you know relate to the journey and then appreciate the journey exactly so once again thank you everybody and we'll see you guys on the next one see you next time